So you don't actually need an airbrush to achieve stuff like this, and it's not hard. In today's video, I'm going to show you how. Welcome to another Artist Opus video. So today we are achieving this, which I am really pleased with, like really pleased with. This is the first time that I've used any of these products, like any of them apart from the paints. And it came out really well and I definitely didn't get it all right. So um, I'm really, really pleased to be able to bring this to you. That's a lot of experimentation. Um, please like the video if you like it. Um, if you wanna have some additional watching, we will link our video, which is our shipping container. Um, you could involve these two perfectly. Again, it's yellow and black, it's got a stripe down it, and you could take what you learned from that and apply it to this, and you could have an uber weathered, kind of like chipped down paint, uh, hazard striped dozer blade that would look absolutely phenomenal and really old and really battered. So that'd be amazing. Please like the video if you like it. Please subscribe, leave a comment below. Anyone who's a subscriber who comments, uh, is eligible for being drawn for the winner of our monthly giveaway, which is for any one of our sets you get to pick and any one of our texture palettes you get to pick. So without further ado, let's get involved. Hello guys, so today we're gonna to be taking this beauty, hopefully start to finish, we'll see, I guess. Um, but the main, the main event is gonna be us putting some properly unsubtle hazard stripes down this dozer blade. Uh, so we're gonna be using stippling, gonna keep it uh, no airbrush, dry brushes only, hopefully, kind of, at least. Um, the idea is to have a, um, a very warm, uh, vibrant yellow uh, behind a cool black, and then around the edges uh, we'll do something on the trim. Not quite sure yet, but we'll figure that out afterwards because we have to do the hazards first because they involve masking. So we'll do the messy bit first, then we'll do the more controllable bits after. Let's crack on. So first step is going to be the doom ball. Oh, I feel bad. This is such a beautiful texture palette. <laughs> oh well. Okay, we're we're in there. It's done. All right. So I'm basically going to stipple the entire thing um, with this doom ball around the edges. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do with these dozer blades later, but it won't involve starting from a dark grey. That's for sure. So I'm not quite finished with this step yet, but I sure I. Should thought I would show you uh, the approach I take to cleaning my brushes between stages. So I've got a little bit of the brown on here. I'm intending on using this brush for the next step with the yellow. And what I do, which is just good practice, is to dip it in my dampening pad and then work off that excess there. Working it from all angles. Now I've not completely cleaned the brush, but if you do this between colors, especially as you get light and you're taking more of it off the brush and it's a less dangerous coat and color, it's a really good uh, practice to get into. So next step is flash gets yellow, which is obviously super bright in comparison to what we've had. And we're just gonna start from the middle there and then work that to the outside. You can use smudging here if that's easier. Um, the reason we've got off, gone off a good prime background, which is a, the, uh, not below, it's a scale 75 grey primer. Um, the reason we've gone off a grey background is just because we'd be giving ourselves a harder job than we need to working up from black. So we're basically just going to build this up with stippling over a couple of layers and kind of get this to a nice vibrant yellow. We're going to have to let this dry fully before we mask it, otherwise you run a few risks. I'm probably also going to spray varnish it. I'll just use Purity Seal or something like that. Uh, while we are waiting for this to get a little bit more dry, I thought what it'd be nice to do is to give this yellow a tiny bit of a highlight in the middle. So we've got some Screaming Skull here. You could add white or any other off-white off brighter color. Work it into our brush, remove the excess. This palette started off beautiful, it is not staying like that, is it? And um, I'm just going to carefully bring that into the middle of our piece. Okay, so just in case you're wondering, um, Chaos Black Primer 
just out of force of habit more than anything, but you could start from this primer. So this is the grey primer that I used and then I varnished with Monitorum varnish. Um, just a protective layer um, on, on top of this yellow. We don't want to strip it off with our masking tape. I'm going to be using fancy masking tape this time around, so hopefully that won't be an issue anyway, but it doesn't hurt to take care. Also, this may be relevant for uh, some future stages and kind of knocking things back and varnishing and that type of stuff. So, um, I've got some masking tape. Let's crack on. Okay, so that's been semi-successful. Uh, I do not like this bit here. Obviously, you could take more time masking that, but um, <laughs> I was getting annoyed. <laughs> so um, there's going to be some heavy weathering in that section. And I'd, like, obviously, that's fairly lazy, but uh, you shouldn't be afraid to... If somewhere isn't going to be perfect, and you can just decide to put some weathering or chipping there or have some battle damage in that direction more, that's absolutely fine. That's not something we should be worrying about. So that's what we're going to do on that bit, conveniently and we're going to be using Incubi Darkness and black. You can use any black here, uh, Vallejo 950 is a super solid one. And we're not looking to do any type of nuancing here. So this is just going to be put all over. I've pressed all these down, so at this stage we are literally just crossing our fingers and hoping for the best. So I'm keeping it fairly um, kind of exactly 90 degrees to the model, basically. So the reason for that is I don't want anything sneaking under uh, masking tape from the top or bottom. And this is so much easier with black than it would be with other colors just because black covers so nicely. So I can do a couple of thinnish stages. You don't want to add too much water into the mix. Uh, like definitely that is something to be avoided at all costs because that water in the mix is just going to give you problems. Um, really apt to be to be a, like, you need a touch to allow your Series D to, to work optimally, which is just the, the little baby touch that I've done beforehand, but don't go oversaturating here because you're asking for it to seep underneath. So even though this may look pretty dark in comparison to the yellow, I'm still not happy with that as the full black. So. I'll let that dry, do one more pass, and then we'll come for the, uh, the reveal moment where we take the masking tape off. Okay, so, fingers crossed, the reveal. There we go. So, that shows what you can do when you use a good knife and a good masking tape. The masking tape for reference is the 6mm stuff from Tamiya. Uh, we get a lot of comments about people struggling to find stuff we use in videos, so I'll link this below. Uh, top tip also, I'll get in really close and show you this. When I put the masking tape down on the miniature, so the way that I get it right to the edges, I've got an old broken X-Acto blade here. I'm sure you guys are familiar with cutting knives that have seen a better day. I take the back of it, I use that to press it down to where we need, turn it around, get on my sharp side, and then work that down the figure, and that helps you get a nice smooth line. After you've done that, use the back of it to press it flush against it. There you go, so that's, that's how I worked it into the corners if that wasn't clear from, uh, from the little speedy, speedy time lapse we did. That's awesome, so um, <laughs> we're already halfway there. Whatever we decide to do with that dozer blade, it's going to look super, super striking. So I've decided we're going to go full metallic for this. So uh, I'm going to pop down a base coat for going underneath the black. I've got Incubi Darkness to hand, so it, I don't particularly care what this is as long as it's pretty dark. And we've used Incubi Darkness elsewhere on the vehicle, so why not? Just using a size 2 from Series S for this. And we're going for a quick base coat. Mix into black if you want to make it work faster, which I may indeed end up doing, but essentially this is just to make sure that our metallics go down nicely. So we'll get every single detail around the edge of the uh, the stripey main event base coat, and we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so we're going to try something here that I hope works. Um, 
This is a fairly normal thing, mixing metallics with your normal paints. It's really, really useful, particularly with silver. So if you've got a silver that you want a darker version of, um, particularly if you don't mind it being a bit more dull, a bit less shiny, it is no bad thing to pop a bit of black in there. Um, I am, however, going to be putting in some black and a little bit of our doing ball brown. Let's do a couple of things. Um, it should make it cover pretty much in one coat, but also obviously we're going to end up with some kind of uh, slightly muted uh, bronzy color uh, rather than the, the pure silver that we're using. We are literally using uh, Vallejo silver. Uh, it's a game air paint, but at this stage it doesn't particularly matter. Um, so we've mixed that up. I'm much happier with that and it allows us to <laughs> Uh, use a darker, um, sorry, a lighter version of this exact colour being just a pure version of this for the chipping later. So mix that up carefully and then we'll undercoat all of these areas with that. Just by brush, uh, you could use a uh, stippling here or you could paint it on normally but we should pretty much get one coat coverage because of that black undercoat and because of what we've mixed in there. So we'll do maybe two thin coats but we'll get all of it and then pop back. All right, there you go. That looks awesome. Okay, it's looking great. So the next step is to give this another varnish to protect it. <coughs> and then we're gonna rock on with our weathering stages. Okay, so we're using uh, this light rust wash from AK. I've never used this before. Uh, shout out to Ross from Bowhammer because he's done a load of reviews on this stuff and used it quite a lot. Um, so I just sent him a message and asked him uh, asked him what his, uh, what his tips and tricks were. Now he told me that he used it through an airbrush. I'm trying to not use an airbrush here. So I'm using a size three from Series S, which has seen far better days. Uh, this is my, has been my wash brush for a long time. So I'm coating the entire thing, top to bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, thinners to remove it, basically, and leave some evidence of streak in there. I don't know how many steps it's going to take. I need the palette. Go straight from the bowl. If you can do, it always feels novel. So cover the entire thing in this. It's got a very thin base, so it should be really nice to work with. go make sure we don't miss out any metallic sections obviously guys I do not recommend you use one of your brand new gorgeous series s brushes for this uh, you can use an old brush or a synthetic brush or something else that uh, has definitely seen better days so it's made less thinner kept on brand rather than jumping around between them but you could use any of this thinner. Uh, this is basically just white spirit obviously. So clean my brush a little and what I'm going to do is remove this vertically. Could use some cotton buds. So I've kept on brand, these are Tamiya. Let's see how this goes. That's quite good actually. So, <laughs> so that's in my mouth. essentially what we're doing at this point is we're going to go over the entire thing bottom to top a few times and uh, just kind of clear it up and make it look as if this stuff has, uh, has kind of dripped down over time. We used light rust in the last stage and we're going to be using engine oil now. Uh, this is a glossy finish one so we'll see how this looks. <laughs> this is all entirely experimental guys. Um, Never used any of these products before. 
I've used the chipping medium in the past and I think I've used their track wash, uh, but that was a couple of years ago. I'm trying to keep this all, like I said, top to bottom. We choose to have it coming from rivets or something like that. Um, anything we do that we don't like, we can get rid of. But we're just trying to add some age, basically. I guess technically this should go on at the end of everything, but we might want to put some pigments down after, so. Right, so that's looking all right. Clean off our brush. And then let's see if we can remove it uh, in the opposite direction, just as with the previous step, bottom to top. Got some tidal marks going on. Maybe I shouldn't have used it quite so thick. Maybe I should have thinned it beforehand, but we can uh, work it away. Because we put down that varnish beforehand, all these steps we're doing, we, we have a lot less worry about making a cock up or an error. And also with pigments to come, we've got multiple ways that we can hide any mistakes or uh, things that we think shouldn't make their way to the, uh, the final version of our model. Okay, so we're really adding to that kind of those layers that we've got of history. Definitely feel like I could be doing this better, but um, it's a learning experience, obviously. It's an important thing to bear in mind when using new products like this. If you've never used something before, it's probably not going to go perfectly right first time. So don't let it get to you if, uh, if it doesn't become exactly what you had imagined in your head before starting to use any of these products or anything like that. All right, we're adding our history to the piece. It's definitely looking older than it did. So at this stage, my, uh, my metal's been knocked back quite a bit by all of the process we put down on it. So I'm just using the same brush to put down the roughest of edge highlights here, using the side of the brush. Obviously you could, uh, you could use a fancy one if you had one, but I've got this one to hand and I'm not looking for these to be precise. In fact, as long as I don't get big smears like that, the fact that things are gonna be quite rough is kind of okay. So I'm just hitting the edges and then what I'll do is I'll remove excess and I'll put down some little scratchy sections or divots around any areas of the black or the, or the yellow that I think they should be chipping on. So I probably need to use a slightly lighter touch It's important to use a really silver silver for this. I know that may sound like a, an obvious statement, but get one that's properly shiny and make sure that that's, that's just jumping out. You don't want to have to hit an area twice with this. Just like using uh, edge highlighting, you, you want to put one thing down and you want to put one thing down as close to correct as possible. Okay, I'm really pleased with that. I, um, I've used a, a, a few slightly too clumsy uh, bits on it, which I don't know if I can do anything about. Not like kind of like suggesting more around their edges, but overall really pleased. That's done exactly what I needed it to. Um, at this stage, we need to hold in mind that if we use any more stuff to do with odorless thinner or white spirits or mineral spirits, whatever phrase you're using for them, that is gonna strip off this silver paint as well. So 
in order to for this to remain permanent you have to avoid using them or you could pop on a uh, another stage of varnish okay let's go okay so we've got rust deposits next what are they called light rust deposits crusted rust deposits beautiful So I'm basically just going to be concentrating this around edges and then removing any excess. We're also going to put some pigments in these areas too. I think perhaps I should have done this before the previous layer of uh, chipping, but we're just going to roll with it now. You're getting a, uh, an unadulterated uh, view at my first attempt here guys. So. If things aren't perfect, that is why. Okay, then what we're going to do, like I said, we can't go back to using our thinners, so see if water works on this. Hopefully it does. No, it doesn't quite. I will have to a little bit creative with this stuff. We can cover this over with uh, with pigments as well that we've got coming up next. So let's try and smudge those out. All right, do as I say, not as I do guys uh, do that one before you do the chipping stage that I did previously. I'll we'll go straight onto the pigments, which should be really good fun. All right, light rust and sienna soil. I don't particularly have a plan with these, but uh, I want to make them look like they're they're built up in the areas that are just kind of recessed where stuff wouldn't get disturbed off the blades. Um, take care when you're using pigments because they can uh, they can get absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to be trying to use a light touch with these. Pick them on with a brush that you definitely don't particularly care about too much. And it's quite hard to be precise with stuff like this, so don't worry, particularly if you don't manage to. Be aware guys, I'm doing this over a texture palette. If you were to use any colors over this section of the texture palette, um, things would go mental uh, the next time you were to touch a brush to it. So I'm gonna prime this texture palette after this and that will make sure that everything which is pigmenty uh, just it kind of stays under that layer of varnish uh, but you should probably do it on paper or something like that all right so these have been built up that's looking great really pleased with that Obviously anywhere that's still wet from our previous stage is going to hold on to these pigments nicely. Hopefully it might uh, make them clump a little, but we can obviously control that if we wish to. looking pretty solid and let's move on to our sienna soil which is going to be our lighter stage on top of it i'm not worried at all about changing brush between this um, the fact that it's got pigments from the previous stage on is absolutely fine this stuff really looks like that uh, light dusty final layer that you'd get uh, anywhere to mining or I guess anywhere where there's limestoney limestoney soil. If you've got any geologists out there you can correct me because that's obviously not based on anything other than my assumptions. Mix in a little. Tap off the excess that's not landed quite as readily as the previous stage. 
don't think you need to worry about that. And I have a pigment fixer here. Never use one of these at all. So uh, let's see how this goes. And this should make everything we've got permanent. Uh, I used to use uh, varnishes in the past, but you do run the risk of kind of just removing stuff and making sure that it, uh, it stays dark forever. Uh, I don't know if this will have the same effect. Let's see. I think it possibly will. It's going to change this stuff into a little bit more of a, uh, a muddy consistency. Might actually go back to our uh, our forlorn size three and uh, use this to push this stuff and control it a little bit more. And then I'm probably going to tap a final layer of pigments on top of this. All right, that's looking pretty good. I reckon we can call that there. That is fantastic. So um, this is my first time using any of these. Uh, really, really pleased with the end result. If you would like to see uh, more comprehensive rundowns of um, our products, other people's products, uh, please do check out Faux Hammer's blog. Uh, Ross puts uh, a lot of effort into writing the most exhaustively comprehensive articles on anything you can think of in our industry. And uh, he's been doing some grim dark stuff with these recently as well, which looks pretty awesome. So. We'll make sure that that is linked below. Uh, this is looking solid though. I have a little bit more of the play with kind of agitating those pigments uh, there, but that is super solid and was all really fun and all forgiving. Like I didn't know what I was doing, particularly at any point and what I assumed I should do kind of worked out all right. If you have any feedback about how I should have done it uh, or any learning points, please pop them below. I'll lap them all up and they might be useful for other people as well. All right, thank you very much for watching. Again, we are really pleased with this. We're really happy. It was great fun. We made loads of mistakes and it didn't matter. And that's part of what I want to push with this. We get a lot of you commenting positively about the fact that we include all of my mistakes. Um, perhaps other people don't make mistakes. I make a lot, uh, but we really like that you enjoy seeing that not everything goes right. And that's a really important part of painting to learn from it. And also if you just carry on and push through, often it really doesn't matter by the end to anyone but you. So if you can learn to carry a little bit less and just push through, you often end up with something you're really pleased with. Like I'm pleased with that and it's covered in mistakes. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please like it if you like it, please subscribe. And again, amazing recommended watching for this would be our shipping container, which we painted in our previous video, which we will link. Um, you could combine those two to do chipped hazard stripes on a weathered dozer blade and it would look the bomb. Thank you very much. We appreciate all of your comments, your likes and your subscriptions. We'll see you soon.